obviously we're going to talk about why you should move to PHP 7 if you haven't already, and uh, how that process, uh, how we can help uh, sort of automate that process uh, to some extent. Um, yeah, I've been introduced already, so I don't have to say a whole lot anymore, I, I guess. Uh, I'm from Belgium, uh, best known for yeah, Belgian beer and Belgian chocolate and other tasty, yummy things and odd-looking buildings. This is an iron crystal magnified 65 billion times. Um, I'm from a town very close to Antwerp, where we have a beautiful abbey and castles and stuff like that. It's all very nice, except when we have some snow, that's what we get then. Uh. And smack in the middle of that, I started a company about uh, 17 years ago now called Cube Solutions. We do mostly PHP. We do a lot of uh, training stuff, uh, high scalability things. Um, and I've been doing open source for 21 years. Wow, I'm getting old. Okay. Um, and I've written a tool, PHP Compatibility, which I'm going to talk about as well today. Uh, and I used to write uh, a tool called OpenX, which is an advertising uh, server. And I've been doing talks like these for the last couple of years. So this, um, this talk is in two parts. Part one is why should you upgrade? So I'm going to talk about what's new in PHP 7.0 to 7.2 at this point. Um, these are not good reasons to upgrade. It's cool to have the latest version. Yes, it is cool, but that's not a good reason to upgrade. And especially um, not a good reason to upgrade is to annoy your sysadmins. But that kind of makes sense. Um, part two, I'm going to talk about how to upgrade and how to automate some of that process. Don't expect me to provide some magical solution here. We can't solve everything, but uh, you'll notice that a lot of the stuff can be automated. A lot of the issues can be detected uh, automatically. I'd like to start with a show of hands. I'd like to know who is running which version in production. Who is still running PHP 3 or PHP 4 anywhere in production? Yeah, there is always at least one. There's two. Yes, and it, it kind of makes sense because there's still code out there that was built by someone way back um, who is probably not working there anymore, who's maybe dead even. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I've seen it happen. Um, and yeah, the code needs to be maintained, but nobody dares to touch it, really. Um, who's running 5.0 in production? OK, 5.1, mm, 5.2, couple of hands, OK, 5.3. Yeah, more hands, 5.4, yes, even more, 5.5, five. not that many, 5.6, as could be expected, 6.0, <laughs> yeah, we skipped that one, 7.0, 7.1, okay, 7.2, okay, 8.0, no, oh, okay, so let's, I mean, You'll, you'll notice I'm going to give the actual numbers now uh, that come from uh, W3Tech, uh, which is actually a very nice site. It gives you an overview of uh, not just PHP, but a lot of other technologies and which versions are actually running. Uh, how exactly they gather their, uh, their data comes from, you can find that information on the site. Um, so it turns out, I, I looked at the numbers in 2013, 2015, and now. And so PHP 4 is luckily dropping, but it's still almost 1%, which means if you have 100 web websites running, about 1% of them are still running PHP 4, which is kind of scary, actually. Uh, PHP 5 still makes up the bulk. 87.2% of all websites are still running. PHP websites are still running on PHP 5. And the biggest chunk of that is 5.3, 5.4, and 5.5. Oh, 5.6 has made a major leap now recently. PHP 7 accounts for only 12%, but it's, yeah, it's getting there gradually, of course. So these are the main worrying ones. 5.2, 5.3, 5.4 have been end of life for a very long time, but still they account for a massive amount of PHP installations. About 40 something percent, 50% almost of all PHP 5 installations. Um, main reason for that is, for example, Debian Squeezy, the, what is it, 7.0 version, is stuck on 5.3.3, which accounts for 12% of that. 
and they provided no patches with their default distribution, so no upgrades, that's a big issue. So before I go and talk about uh, 7.0, let's have a very quick recap or one slide recap of what we've actually done in 5, 5.3, 5 5.6, 5 because you'll notice that a lot of ha has evolved in PHP, but some of the stuff you might take for granted now. Uh, but this is what we went through from 5.3 to 5.6. So we did namespaces. That was a big one, of course. We wouldn't have most modern frameworks today use namespaces, so we wouldn't have all that functionality in there. Uh, late static binding. Uh, closures, of course, a big one. Uh, better garbage collection. That was really useful in PHP 5.4. Go to. Well, yeah, we can, we can argue about that, whether it's useful or not, but it does serve a purpose every now, every now and then. MySQL native driver, uh, performance gain, yeah. PHP 5.4 and 5.5 five, five, uh, had massive performance gains. The short array syntax, which I think everybody is gradually switching to, finally. Uh, traits were introduced. A built-in web server that we can use for development, which is kind of nice as well. Um, Binary notation was introduced. We finally got rid of register globals, magic words, GPC, and the thing that was actually not really safe, which was called safe mode. Uh, we have generators now, and we have a nice password hash function so that we don't have to write our own hashing function anymore. Um, anyone still using their own functions? Please switch to password hash. And we have a built-in op cache so we don't need to install APC or e-accelerator and so on. It's all built-in. So that was a lot of stuff that we got in the 5.x release, but of course it was time to move forward. Then again, 5.6 has been out for a very long time and a lot of people are still not using it. 49.2% of all PHP 5 installations are still 5.5, uh, are still 5.4 and before. Uh, which means you cannot run Symfony 3, which means you cannot run Zen Framework 3 and many other frameworks on it. Um, that's kind of a problem for developers. So in a lot of companies, production servers are maintained by system engineers, and they don't like upgrading, or they don't like touching something that's not broken. Um, and so yeah, it's becoming a, a bigger and bigger problem for PHP developers if they cannot use the latest frameworks, obviously. So let's talk about PHP 7. What has changed? Well, we have new features. We'll talk about those. We'll have a look at some performance and memory usage improvements. We have a lot of consistency problems that have been resolved. Um, and a lot of things have been removed or deprecated and will be removed in future versions. Let's talk about new things. Um, one of the big things, scalar, type scalar typing and return type declarations. So what you can do now is you can have a function, some function, and then instead of having just your parameters to that function, you can now specify, hey, this is an int, or this is a string, and I'm going to have this function return a boolean. This has been a long time coming. Some people didn't like it, some people protested against it, um, but we finally have it. So we have new scalar types, int, float, bool, and string, and we can have return types that can be specified, and of course, they can be one of those scalar types as well. So this is an extension on top of the fact that you could specify objects and arrays in the past. Now we can also have uh, these new scalar types. Now, there is still, PHP always uh, was a weakly typed language. And there is still a choice you can make. You can still use these as weak. So you can say, OK, I have that i parameter, that first pr parameter. Um, it's an int, yes. But you can still give it a float. What will happen is PHP will just convert it to an int when the function is called. But it's not going to complain. It's not going to tell you, hey, you're giving me a float, but I'm expecting an int. It's just going to say, OK, I'm just going to convert it. I'm just going to coerce it. So PHP 5 style, but it, has, it is actually going to convert it when the function is called. The, other al the alternative is using strong or strict typing. Um, in which case, you need to define it at the top of the file. Now, when I say the file, I mean every single file where you want to use strict typing. Uh, to do that, you declare strict types equals one. That means if you have, let's say, an index.php and you include a file in there, 
um, if that included file has declared strict types equals one, it's only valid for that file. If you include another file in it, it's still only valid for that file and not the file you include within that file. So that's kind of important to realize that. Um, if you declare strict types and you use the wrong type, it's going to throw a type error, um, which is a fatal error. Now, in PHP 5, any fatal error would end the program. As we'll see in a minute, um, PHP 7 has changed error handling strategy, and you can actually catch a lot of the fatal errors. Returning null is actually also invalid. If you specify that a bool will be returned, then returning null will give you a type error as well. So if you say, I want to return an int, either you return an int or you're going to get an error. There is a way around that. We'll see that in a minute. Another new feature, the null coalescing operator. In PHP 5, if you wanted to get something from get or post um, and use that information, but you weren't sure if the information was actually going to be there, you would have to use isset and then use the ternary operator and then use the parameter and then some default in case it wasn't there. In PHP 7, we can make that a little bit shorter, two question marks, so it's going to use the parameter from the get string, or it's going to um, use the default. And you can chain them so you can say, okay, I'm going to try from get, I'm going to try from post, and then I'm going to use the default. So useful feature, a little bit less typing, which we all like. I had to put a rocket up there because um, another new feature is uh, the spaceship operator. Um, and if you look carefully, it looks a little bit like, um, what are they called from Star Wars? Um, a TIE fighter, thank you. It looks a little bit like that, which is why it's called a spaceship operator. Uh, what does it do? It compares expressions. Um, it's going to return minus one, zero, or one. So easiest to illustrate with an example, of course. If you compare one with one, you're going to get zero because there is no difference between the left side and the right side of the, exp of the operator. If you compare one and three, you're going to get minus one because the left side is smaller than the right side. Five and two, you're going to get one because the left side is larger. The same goes for strings. A and A gives you zero. A and Z gives you minus one. Z and A gives you one. It also works on arrays. I don't have an example of it here, but it's going to compare arrays um, one element at a time. If you give it a longer string, it's going to compare one character at a time until it finds a difference. If it finds no difference, it's going to return zero, of course. So this is quite useful in many uh, cases, mostly, in my opinion, for, um, for things that are not too complicated. Um, I don't personally use it for anything like arrays. But Another new feature in PHP 7.0 is the <coughs> Unicode code point escape syntax. It's a very complicated thing to basically say that you can use a hexadecimal string uh, and it will convert that hexadecimal string into a UTF-8 double-coded string. So for example, echo backslash u curly brace 2615 will output a coffee cup. Nice. Um, this one I particularly like, and it's, it's something that you don't see mentioned when people talk about PHP 7, um, but if you have to unserialize data coming from some API call or you stored something in the database, or someone else stored something in the database, and you need to work with that data, then in many cases, you don't know what's going to be in there. And of course, you only want to get not only valid data, but also data that is of the types that you really want. Now, unserializing means you're going to initialize classes in many cases. Um, and there's a new uh, option in the unserialize uh, function that allows you to specify which classes are allowed. Now, you could use um, the first one, which is allowed classes false, which kind of doesn't make sense because then you're telling unserialize, yeah, go and unserialize, but don't allow anything, which makes no sense. So you're going to get an object of the type PHP incomplete class. But if, for example, in the second, uh, in the second example, you use 
allowed classes article and user, you know that you're only going to get objects of the type article, user, or again, PHP incomplete class if someone else, if someone pushed something else into it. So this is a good way of kind of restricting what is being unserialized. Also, 7.0, CSPRNG function. Um, this is a very useful feature to generate random data, and not just generate random data, but do it in a way that works the same way across all platforms. So depending on whether you're on Linux or Windows, it's going to use completely different, um, different libraries for that. For example, on, on Linux, it might use a number of libraries and then fall back eventually to dev view random. Uh, on Windows, it's going to use completely other libraries, but it's going to generate random data that's cryptographically secure. So no messing around with weird self-created random stuff. There's two functions for that. There's random bytes, uh, which you can give a length, and it's going to produce a number of bytes randomly. Uh, and there's random int, which is obviously going to create a random int between min and max. Of course, there are certain things that are deprecated in PHP 7. Um, one of them is the PHP 4 style constructor. Did anyone ever build PHP code with a PHP 4 style constructor? Yes, some people have been coding for a very long time. <laughs> or have to, had to make changes to PHP 4 code, of course. Um, so that's deprecated now. Um, you can still do it, it'll still work, but it's going to be removed in probably PHP 8. Um, the other thing you can still do, but is deprecated, and will give you an e-deprecated notice, is when you make a static call to a, a method that is not defined as static. You can still do it, it's not advisable, and it's going to be removed anyway in the future. Um, another thing that is modified is preg replace no longer supports backslash e, which was basically telling preg replace to do an eval which is kind of evil anyway, so um, you have to use preg replace callback as an alternative there, which is, if you do it properly, a little bit safer, a little bit better. So I said before that error handling has significantly changed in PHP 7. So most fatal errors that you encountered in PHP 5 have now become exceptions in PHP 7. So you can actually catch those. There's a new class called error, uh, which means also that if your PHP 5 code currently has a class called error, you will need to rename that because it's going to conflict. Um, all the error and exception classes, they implement the throwable interface, which is interesting to know. And it's not just an implementation detail, as we'll see in a minute. Um, so when you encounter an error in this case, let's imagine that you have a type error because you gave a float where an int was expected, the error of is thrown by PHP, and it will bubble up through all the functions, method calls that you have until it hits a matching catch block. And then, of course, the code in that catch block is run. Now, if it, if it doesn't find a matching catch block, it's going to go to the default exception error handler, the default error handler. If that error handler doesn't exist, then it's going to still throw a fatal error. So you might still get fatal errors if you do not properly handle um, the errors or exceptions that are being thrown. This is probably unreadable at the back, but these are all the errors and all the exceptions. The exceptions are pretty similar to what we already had in PHP 5. Not a lot of them have been, I mean, some of them have been added, um, but the errors are completely brand new. So we have an arithmetic error with a division by zero error. Uh, we have that type error before. We have even have a parse error, which can be called, for example, if you do eval and you provide it with code that is actually not correct PHP code. Then it's going to throw a parse error. So what's important is that if you just do catch, <coughs> sorry, catch and then say exception as the type of what you're trying to catch, it's not going to catch errors in PHP 7. And if you do catch error, it's not going to catch exceptions. 
So the only way to do it properly and to have code that works in PHP 5 and PHP 7 is to catch throwable, which is the interface that both error and exception implement. But that's not going to work in PHP 5, so you still have to catch exception for PHP 5 as well. It's kind of a workaround for as long as we're using PHP 5 and looking at how long we were still using PHP 4 in production in some places, we will need this workaround for a while, probably. Now, set error handler always allowed you to set your own error handling system. Um, so you would normally write a function handler and then you would assign that using set error handler. However, because of the same reasons, it doesn't work when you give it a parameter exception. Um, so if you want it to work in PHP 5 and 7, you cannot specify a type anymore there, which is kind of odd because you, a lot of people have been getting used to specifying a type. You can't do that anymore. Um, unless, of course, you want to say, oh, I don't care about PHP 5 code. I'm running everything on PHP 7. In that case, you can, again, just specify throwable. Another change that might cause issues if you migrate code from PHP 5 to PHP 7 is the variable variable handling. Um, this was caused actually by the fact that PHP now relies on the abstract syntax tree. So that's basically when PHP is, when PHP code is interpreted and turned into opcodes, um, it's going to build an entire tree of what the code looks like. You can actually retrieve that uh, from PHP now and have a look at how exactly the code is structured internally. Um, but because of the changes that were made to, to implement that, there have been a number of changes. Now, this is, this is basically a screenshot from the PHP manual. Uh, it didn't feel like copying this all over because it it's perfectly illustrates that Whenever you have a specific expression, the interpretation between PHP 5 and PHP 7 can be completely different. Um, luckily, you can detect most of these, uh, most of the places where this might cause a problem. However, modifying it automatically is, well, difficult because you'll need to actually look at code and say, what was I doing here in PHP 5? And how do I need to modify it to make it work in PHP 7? So this is one of the things that could actually break applications. Now, it, it was never a good idea to do things like that. But we all did things that we're not too proud of, I guess so. Uh, so it will require manual testing, fixing, and so on. So uh, some stuff was removed as well. Um, for example, you cannot do global, the global keyword, and then use a variable variable behind that. That's no longer allowed. I don't think a lot of people ever did that, but it's not possible anymore. Um, the salt option in the pretty new password hash um, function has been deprecated. PHP will do that for you. It will generate a salt that's good for you automatically. Other stuff that's been removed, um, ereg is not there anymore. The MSSQL extension is not there anymore. The MySQL extension is not there anymore, which means you'll have to use MySQL I, MySQL native driver, and so on. Um, we finally got rid of MySQL. I mean, sorry. <laughs> I don't mean we finally got rid of MySQL, but the old module at least. Sybase CT is not there. And starting with PHP 7.1, mcrypt is gone. And uh, we actually encountered last week, we encountered a, a project where we're using brand new code. We're using a very modern framework. It's built on top of Symfony 2.0, no, 3 at this point. But it's using mcrypt. And so we cannot upgrade to uh, PHP 7.1 on that one. Um, yeah, as I said, ereg was removed, so all the functions, of course, removed. Call user method, call user method array have been removed. The dl function is still there, but it's not there in PHP FPM anymore because it was causing some issues. And everything related to PostScript type 1 fonts have, has been removed as well. That's 
long gone, that's ancient history. And then there's a lot of INI, function, INI settings that have been removed as well. I'm not going to go through these. Um, I'm not mentioning everything that's changed, just like the most critical ones. A couple of other things that have changed. Um, if you have an invalid octal, in the past, PHP would just cut it off and would just ignore. Now it's going to throw a parse error, which is catchable, so you can actually give a nice error message to your users. Um, negative bit shifts should never have been there in the first place. Um, if you do it now, you get an arithmetic error, which, again, you can catch. A division by zero now doesn't give a fatal error. It actually gives you a division by zero error. And um, hexadecimal strings are no longer numeric. They are now actual strings. And of course, given the fact that we have a couple of new introductions into um, the types, there are some new res reserved keywords, and there are some that have been reserved for future use as well, like voyage, iterable, resource, and so on. They're not reserved today. Um, they're not. You can still use them for other purposes, but it's not recommended anymore. However, PHP 7 also um, kind of loosened restrictions on the use of keywords. So one of the things you can do now within a class, blah, you can do function yield, which is actually a function in PHP, but you can now use it as a, the name of a class, of, the, of, a, of a method again, which personally I don't like very much, but it is allowed again. To me, it's very confusing. If I see function yield, I'm like, what? Yield, yield, I know that, but that's a function in PHP, so very confusing. Um, and this has been deprecated for a very long time. Um, you cannot assign by reference on the new, when you're using new, um, creating a new object. It's now going to give you a parser um, saying that you cannot do that. Although, honestly, I don't like the error message because it's not actually telling you what you did wrong. It's just saying, I didn't expect new which is kind of odd. Um, yeah, ASP and script PHP tags have been removed. I don't think anyone was using those anymore, but still. And a switch statement can no longer have more than one default block, which is kind of silly anyway, but yeah, you can't do that. And the date time zone warning that you used to get after PHP 5.3, if you didn't set it, that's now been removed again. So. If you don't set it, it's fine. By default, it's going to set itself to UTC. The biggest change, I think, performance and memory usage between 5, 6, and 7. Uh, performance has gone up anywhere, and it depends on which application you're using, and depends on who's doing the testing, really, and who's showing the graphs. And I'm not actually going to show you any graphs, because there's plenty out, of the, out there, and they're all different. But they all show anywhere between 200 and 300% increase. Of course, if your code is three lines, you're not going to notice. If you're loading the entire Symfony framework, it's going to be a massive difference. Um, what did they do? They optimized a lot of things in the core. They took a lot more direct approaches, uh, less redirection inside the code. They allocate a lot less memory for every single thing. Um, and every data structure has become smaller for every single data type, actually. And given the fact that we're constantly tossing data around, that makes a huge difference, of course. Um, memory usage, up to 50% drop, which, of course, gives you a big impact on large frameworks or on things like WordPress or Drupal, makes a huge difference. So if for any re I mean, if, if, there's, if you're looking for a reason to upgrade to PHP 7, this is probably the biggest one, because if you have 10 servers running today, you could do with half tomorrow. Now, most of these were 7.0. I'm quickly going to tell you what's new in 7.1 as well. Um, so I said before that if you, wanna, if you specify that a bool has to be returned from a function um, and you return null, it's going to give an error. Well, that's true, except in 7.1, you can specify a nullable type. And you do that by prepending with a question mark. 
So in this case, you're actually saying, I'm going to return an int or I'm going to return null. So that's possible now. Um, you're also going to get an exception in PHP 7.1 if you specify that you're expecting a parameter in your function and you're not actually passing one. Then you're going to get an, an argument count error. Uh, other changes, rand and srand, you can still use them, but they're actually just aliases now. Um, you cannot do this on a string anymore um, because a string is a string, it's not an array, um, although it, is, it consists of characters, but still. So you cannot append something to a string like that anymore. You're going to get a fatal error. The date time constructor now, by default, uses microseconds, whereas in the past, it only uses used seconds. That does mean if you create two date times, even if you create them on the same second and you compare them, they will be different now. Whereas in the past, they were the same because you created them at the same moment. Um, yeah, SSL version 2 has been dropped, which is a very good thing for security reasons. There's a new function called session GC, garbage collection. Um, mostly useful um, if you have a low traffic site. Um, I'm going to have to speed up, apparently. <laughs> Uh, if you have a low traffic site, garbage collection might not be called enough. Uh, if you have a high traffic site, you don't want garbage collection to be called the whole time. So this allows you to do it manually, basically. Okay. Oops. Okay. Oops, I was there already. Uh, there's a new Sodium extension, which adds a lot of uh, cryptographic stuff as well now. Um, and there is a new object type that you can specify. So you can basically tell it, I'm going to return an object in without specifying which type. Um, new functionality for password hash, uh, new, in new TLS version that's specified by default, and some stuff that's removed as well. Create function is deprecated. Auto load is deprecated as well now, the magic at least. And each is deprecated because we have for each, which is much more efficient. So the question is should you upgrade to PHP 7 today? The answer is mostly yes. Unless, of course, you're using any of the func extensions that have been removed or any of the functions that have been removed. If you have no unit tests mm, or if you have no packages for PHP 7 available for your servers, and you have to manually compile everything, you might want to hold off. Then again, it might be a good reason to reinstall your servers altogether or set up new ones. Um, postponing upgrades brings you to the problem of end of life. Uh, whereas in the past, uh, the principle was, yeah, we'll see. Now the principle is whenever a minor release is brought out, add two to that minor release, and that one is end of life. So, and then you still get critical uh, security patches for one year, but you get no f bug fixes. That means as soon as 7.2 came out, 7.0 became end of life. So anyone who's done a lot of effort upgrading to 7.0, well, you're going to get critical security bug fixes and security fixes until probably the end of the year, and then it's going to be end of life. Um, and the same goes for when 7.3 is released, 7.1 will be end of life. And anyone still running 5.6, and there were a lot of people, a lot of hands went up. It's currently on security patches only, and by the 1st of January, it's going to be end of life. No security patches whatsoever. So that will be the end of the 5.x release. So you have about 11 months, well, 10 and a half. So if you're on PHP 7, or 7.1, start upgrading as well to the latest version again. Because, of course, that's the biggest one, 87% still, but yeah. And I don't have to tell you the main reasons are security, performance, framework support. Symphony 4 requires 7.1.3. Zen Framework 3 requires still 5.6. Laravel 5.6 also requires 7.1.3. And it's just a good idea to keep every single developer motivated so that they can use the latest, the latest tools. Ooh. 
So, a couple of ways you can upgrade, of course. Uh, you can run all your unit tests, you can try to visit every single page on your website, or you can try to automate it using static analysis. And that's what we're going to have a look at now. So, back in 2010, I had to do this for about 40 different projects when I was working at the Belgian Railways. Mm -hmm. uh, there was code there from PHP 4 and PHP 5, and we had to migrate all that, and I thought, how am I going to pull this off? And then I thought, I'm going to try to automate it using our continuous integration environment. We have some unit tests. Let me put all the projects in there, even the ones that don't have unit tests. And let me use a tool called PHP Code Sniffer. Who here uses PHP Code Sniffer? Was anyone? Yeah, quite a few. OK. Uh, oops. So PHP Code Sniffer was originally a pair package. It's now available on Composer as well. Uh, it's been mostly rebuilt uh, recently for version 3. And it is actually designed to detect coding standard violations. So it will tell you, hey, you're putting this curly brace there, and you should be putting it on the next line, or you need to use spaces instead of tabs. That's what it was designed for. It supports multiple standards. So of course, it supports things like PSR2, but it also supports the Zen Framework coding standard, or any other that you might come up with yourself. Please don't. Um, and it is a static analysis tool. That means it goes and analyzes your code without actually executing the code. So it's going to split up your code in what they call tokens. So a token could be open curly bracket or false or a semicolon. Those are all tokens. And it's going to parse every single file separately. So um, if you run it, and I'm going to show that now. Um, so I have here an index.php. So if you've installed it, which you can do with Composer, you can run PHP CS, code sniffer, dash i, and it will tell you the installed coding standards are, and then you get a whole list. And now I can just say, okay, I'm going to use a specific standard. Uh, I'm going to use the Zen standard, for example, and I'm going to run it on my current directory, which only has one file in this case. And it will tell you, oh, look, um, I found an opening brace of a class. It must be on the line after the definition and so on. Or um, consider putting global function test in a static class. So it will tell you everything that is not correct according to the coding standard. And if I can switch back now, that would be nice. Yeah. So I wrote a tool to do that migration. Uh, called PHP compatibility. And it is actually what they call a standard in PHP code sniffer. You can install many of those standards, each have different rule sets in there. And the only purpose of PHP compatibility is to find compatibility issues. So it's not actually a coding standard, it's just going to look for um, what it can find that might not be compatible with other PHP versions. So it's going to detect deprecated functions, deprecated extensions, uh, uh, prohibited function names or class names, and so on. It works for anything starting from PHP 5 and above. To make it work, it's very simple. If you use Composer, you can just install the package. It's located at, on GitHub. Uh, it's wimg slash php dash compatibility. Um, and then you have one step that you still need to do because you need to give code sniffer the location of the standard. Otherwise, it doesn't know where to look for it. So if PHP compatibility is the only coding standard that you have installed, you can just add a script. That's very easy. I will put these slides online, by the way, so you can use this as a reference as well. Um, if you have more than one coding standard, there are a couple of additional uh, packages that you can install to automate that process as well. Um, if you don't use Composer, you can just download the package and again run config set and give it the path where you installed PHP compatibility. So, as I said, PHP CS-I tells you which standards are available, and then you can actually just specify which standard you want to use. Now, what's important is if you have a huge directory, this could be very slow. If you run this across a huge installation with uh, a vendor directory that contains 300 packages, 
it's not recommended. You should never run it across the vendor packages. They should do that themselves. You should only run it across your code. However, you should definitely always use dash dash extensions. There's no point in scanning JavaScript files or images or videos or something like that. It's not going to contain PHP. If you want to test for 7.0 compatibility, you need to run your tests on a 7.0 installation of PHP. Otherwise, it's not going to recognize certain keywords. And again, it doesn't actually run the code, which means it cannot detect every single incompatibility. Some things only happen when the code is actually running. But it will provide you with a file name and a number, of course. So let's have a quick look at what that looks like. So if I say, no, I'm not going to run Zend. I'm going to run PHP compatibility. Oops. I made a typo. Compatibility. So I'm going to show you that file first. So I have a file here, and it's uh, it has a for loop with a break in there, for example, a break with a parameter, which is no longer allowed in recent versions. Um, I also have this little weird thing that I, I already mentioned before that's different. It behaves differently in PHP 5 and PHP 7. I also have a PHP 4 style constructor here. And I'm doing a new with uh, by reference, which is also, of course, not allowed. So let's have a look. If we run it across it, it's going to tell you, oh, you're using a, a variable argument on the break, which is correct. That's forbidden since PHP 5.4, so that's an error. Um, you're having indirect access to variables. It has changed left to right order and th things like that. So you might want to check that. Um, then there's the constructor, which is currently deprecated, so it's not an actual error, it's a warning. And then, of course, that new with by reference, that is forbidden in PHP 7.0. So this is kind of the, the output you would get. Um, and we'll run it across a couple of other things in a minute. Now, by default, it's going to check for the latest PHP version. So in this case, 7.2 is what, uh, what is defined in PHP compatibility. But you can specify on runtime, you can say, no, you need to test for 7.0, for example. So source there here is the, the directory you want to check, of course. Or you can say, I want you to check for 7.0 to 7.1, or anything 7.0 and higher. But you can also do the opposite. So you can say, I'm coding on my machine. I'm writing code in 7.2, but my production environment is running 5.6, for example. So in that case, you can specify, uh, let me see. Oh, come on. Let's say 5.4. Oh. Yeah, so you can tell now that I have one error less, I think. Yeah, so if I go to 5.2, for example, it's going to do something completely different. Now it's going to complain about the fact that the int type declaration is not present in an older version. So if you're writing code on 7.2 and you're trying to deploy it on 5.6, and you're not doing any checks, you might actually break your production environment. If you run this across it, it, it will tell you, you're using this functionality, but that's not available on your server. So the bool return type is not present in 5.6. Yeah, having issues here. OK. Now, you can also s disable warnings, because sometimes you're going to get warnings about one specific rule in there. Um, you can create a phpcs.xml file, and in there you can put something like, yeah, I'm using PHP compatibility, but I want you to ignore that specific rule because of the fact that you know about it, it's not a problem for your specific installation. Every now and then, it will give a false positive. It will tell you there's a problem here because you created very complicated code, maybe, um, with a lot of 
a lot of curly braces in there, a lot of other braces in there, and it's gonna say, whew, I think this is a problem, but in fact, it might not be a problem. Also here, you can specify the test version. So this is a way of kind of automating uh, on the continuous integration side of it. There are a couple of other tools. Um, there is, that will do the same thing for WordPress. There's a PHP compatibility checker, which actually uses PHP compatibility, and it will run across all your plugins and tell you, hey, this plugin is not compatible with PHP 7, so don't upgrade your server because your WordPress will not work anymore. Um, and then you can have a look whether they, there's a new update for the plugin, or maybe you need to switch to a different plugin, but at least you know. Um, there's in PHP Storm 10 and higher, there is a PHP 7 compatibility inspection, but it will do most of the inspection only on the parameter types. It doesn't do a lot of the other things. This one is a very interesting one, and I know there's a talk tomorrow afternoon uh, that will focus mostly on, on PHP 7 CC, which is a very similar project to PHP compatibility. It's slightly less up to date. I think the last update is, was in, in April last year. Um, but it has very similar functionality. And in that talk tomorrow, I know he's going to show some comparisons between the two, so I'm actually very curious about that. Uh, and then there's also FAN, which was built originally by Rasmus Lerdorf, the creator of PHP, uh, which is a general static an analyzer, which does a lot more than just compatibility checks. In fact, the compatibility checks are very limited, but it does a lot of other code checks that um, are very interesting to have a look at. Um, and this one actually is a Docker image that uses all of the above. You can just run it across your code and it will run all of those automatically and will give, we, give you a bunch of reports uh, with all of the tools without having to manually install all of them. So it's just kind of automated tool. So to conclude, there is no way to 100% detect all compatibility issues. But if you can automate like 95% of it, that's a big gain, of course. Um, first install PHP compatibility or one of the other tools on a local machine, but please use it in your continuous integration environment because today you might upgrade to PHP 7, but then you need to go to 7.3 at some point and 7.4 and then maybe 8. So it's going to help you all the time. It's going to be a, a continuous non-stop check for your code. So start upgrading. Um, how much time do I have left? Uh, about 10 minutes for questions. About 10 minutes for questions. Okay, I'm gonna do one small little thing that I wanna show. Uh, I installed Laravel, and I thought I'd just run PHP compatibility Whoops, with the latest version, of course, across that, hang on. Oh yeah, so there is one very nice feature, dash P gives you progress, which for very big tests can be useful to see that actually something is happening. Uh, and I noticed yesterday if I tell Laravel, if I try it with uh, the Laravel framework and I say PHP 7.1, that it's actually going to tell us that there is a problem and I should ignore warnings because we're gonna get a lot of warnings here. Yeah, empty files will also be reported as, hey, there's no code in there, that's a problem. Uh, but you can ignore that, you can uh, in fact disable that warning altogether. But you can tell that there's an E when it says error, a W is a warning. And so what you can see here is that actually Laravel requires uh, PHP um, 7.2, in fact, the latest version, it, which is not out. It, it was uh, on master. So, um, yeah, a lot of the big frameworks are now actually on the very, very latest version of, uh, of PHP. So, upgrading is the, the task at hand right now.